We're so glad that you joined us for worship today, and we want to continue to bring you this wonderful worship programming. Would you help to partner with us in doing that? Go to takemehome.church, and when you get there, press the Give button. Your donations will help to make a difference in us getting the wonderful message of the Lord Jesus Christ out to our community. Thank you so much for partnering with us. Hi, I'm Brian Leversee, pastor at Fellowship Baptist Church here in Vienna, West Virginia. And we would invite you to come home with us at Fellowship every Sunday on WTAP NBC and WIYE CBS. We know that you'll love worshiping together with us. We look forward to worshiping with you.
Hi, I'm Brian Leversee, pastor at Fellowship Baptist Church here in Vienna, West Virginia. And we would invite you to come home with us at Fellowship every Sunday on WTAP NBC and WIYE CBS. We know that you'll love worshiping together with us. We look forward to worshiping with you. Hi, this is Pastor Leversheim. We're so glad you're taking time to worship with us today, but we want to invite you to come home and worship with us right here at Fellowship Baptist Church on Sunday mornings. We know that you'll be greeted warmly. Your children will enjoy our children's programs. We've got classes for all ages, and you'll enjoy worshiping together in person with us. So come home and worship with us right here at Fellowship Baptist They make an end in a day? Now, what was he meaning by that question? He was meaning this. Hey, they better get this wrapped up in a day and they're not gonna be able to do it because we're gonna come against them and we're gonna prevent that work. And that's what Satan wants to do in your life and mine. He wants to prevent the work of God. He doesn't want us to be built up. He doesn't want us to be established. He doesn't want us to be a witness. He doesn't want us to be a testimony. He doesn't want us to be a light. And he wants to attack the work that God is doing. But how many of you are glad by the grace of God, we can see the progress of his sanctification in our life. And what a blessing that is. Sanballat, man, he's a mean guy. What, are they going to make an end to their building in one day? It's kind of like me when my son brings me a little drawing he's done. Says, hey, son, or he says, hey, dad, hey, I drew this dinosaur. What do you think about it? And I look at him and go, that's a dinosaur? I thought it was a chicken. You know, people like to do that. The devil likes to do that. He likes to come into our life and mock the progress of God and mock our sanctification and make us feel foolish. But we know better than that. How many of you are glad that you can see the fruit of God's redemption in your life today? How many of you are glad that you can see his presence and his work in your life today? Don't let Satan get you out from your building project by allowing him to criticize the work that God is doing. God is building in your life and building with his callings and his will and his word. Let's continue to make progress for him. The wicked one also, our enemy, likes to criticize our past. Notice what Sandballot says here. Will they make an end in a day? Notice, will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? What is, what is Sandalit referencing? For years, these walls have sat here. For years, your past, you've been in ruins, you've been broken, you've been a reproach, and you think you're going to recover from that? How many of you know one of the favorite tactics the devil likes to do is to come and kick your past back up in your face again? Remember this failure? Remember this weakness? Remember this difficulty? Remember how these walls were burned down? Remember how this issue was broken down in your life? But how many of you are glad when Jesus comes into your life, all those things are passed away and all things are become new? Hey, one person get excited about that this morning. How many of you are glad that you're new in the Lord Jesus Christ this morning? Praise God. We're a Baptist church. We can say amen from time to time, okay? Somebody say amen just for exercise. Amen. amen. Let's say that a little more often. You know, when God gets hold of your heart, it's okay. How many of you want your preacher to be encouraged to keep yelling up here? All right. All right. When I hit a good point, say amen. All right. Say amen. All right. So when, when, when that past gets kicked up in our face, you know, we don't have to grab onto that past and act like it rules our life anymore. How many of you are glad our past doesn't rule us? We have a wonderful future in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
He's given us a hope. He's given us a freedom. He's bought us with a price, and now we get to glorify him in our body and our spirit, which are God's. We're a building project, and we're the temple of God, and he's in us, and he can be seen through us. And so when the devil comes and he says, oh, you used to be broken down, what can you do? Oh, man, look at the sin that was in your life. Who do you think you are? Hey, when he reminds us of our past, let's turn back to him and remind him of his future. Because how many of you know our future is with the King of kings and Lord of lords, our Father God in heaven? And so we have this wonderful understanding that our past doesn't control us, but the, he likes to have that spirit of criticism towards us concerning our past, but also he likes to criticize our future as well. Notice what Sanballat now transfers over to Tobiah. Tobiah begins to speak. And notice what Tobiah says, verse number three. Now Tobiah, the Ammonite, was by him, and he said, even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Man, what a, what a criticism this was. Oh, that work is shoddy. It's not gonna stand up to, to anything. If I, if I send a fox up, a little fox up, he could knock down that whole wall. That's what Satan likes to do. Really, you think you're building the future for yourself? Hey, you're going to get right back in the same jam you were in before. You're going to fall right back in the same sin you were before. Oh, you think you're doing good, huh? Well, just wait a few more weeks. Your your fire is going to burn out. You'll be right back where you were before. Is it just me or does Satan like to come into your life and try to tell you that from time to time? He criticizes these things in our life and this critical spirit is a tactic that Satan uses to try to keep the work of God from taking place in our life. We need to know our enemy. We need to know the nature of our enemy. So we see the critical spirit. But I want us to also see the threatening spirit. It escalates here. The criticism doesn't work. They stay on the wall, praise God. And how many of you believe today that regardless of who criticizes us, we need to stay on the wall as Christians? We need to continue building a work for God. And so they continued to build, and so they escalated from criticism to now threats. Notice with me, if you would here, drop down to verse number seven. But it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Amorites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wroth. How many of you know that people that go against God seem to be mad a lot? Now, I wonder if that's why the world isn't so mad today. They're so against God, they can't even be happy or joyful. They're just a wreck and they're in destruction. And notice what happens here in verse 8. And so they conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. So now we have the threats. And this is amazing. These threats come and, and they begin to attack physically the threat of coming in and destroying the work of God. Now, how many of you are glad, like I am, that in the United States of America, we haven't had to put up with a lot of physical issues concerning persecution? I'm certainly grateful for that. A bulk of the world, however, uh, Christian populations have had to endure physical persecution, imprisonment, uh, beatings, even death. We've not had to endure a whole lot of that here in the United States of America. But there always seems to be this looming threat that the wicked one has in our lives. I'm going to come and get you. I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to tear you down. Hey, make no mistake about it. Even in the high places of power today, there are people conspiring against the word of God, against the church of God, against the people of God, and against the work of God. And we need to understand that and know that. The Bible tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against spiritual wickedness, in high places. And so the devil has this threat. And how many of you understand threats can be scary? I remember when I was growing up in my neighborhood in Waterloo, Iowa, I lived on the street where I had, uh, you know, at least a couple friends, but there was this one guy who was a bully on the street and he wanted to beat up everybody. And we'd be riding our skateboards outside and, and uh, he'd come up with his fancy skateboard and he'd kind of push his skateboard into ours and start stirring up trouble. And yeah, I, I, I was on a, could you imagine me on a skateboard? I never one time broke a bone, though. It's probably because I wasn't very good. So the, the good guys always break bones. So. But we were skateboarding, and he would come up, and, and he would threaten me. And I don't know why. He just, he just felt big and tough, I guess. And he said, all right, listen, if you stick around here, I'm going to punch you in the nose as hard as I can. I'm like, man, why, why are you talking like that? We're just out here skateboarding. Why are you trying to ruin our day? He said, I'm going to punch you if you don't leave. 
So I left. How many of you know you don't want to stand there and have some big guy tell you he's going to punch you in the nose? I said, skateboarding isn't worth this. So I'd go out the next day and I got my skateboard and I went out and I started skating. And he'd come up to me again and said, hey, you get off my street. I'm going to punch you in the nose. I said, all right, I'm out of here. So I left. My dad said, why do you keep coming home? It's summer vacation. Why are you out there playing? And, uh, and I said, well, there's this big guy and he keeps coming up to me and saying that if I don't leave and get off his street, that he's going to punch me in the nose. And my dad said, well, wouldn't it? Now, he didn't condone violence ever. Most of the time. <laughs> but he said, well, I wonder what would happen, you know, if somebody just stood up to him and, and, and maybe, maybe if he felt what being punched in the nose felt like, maybe he wouldn't want to do it to other people. So I thought on that, and I thought on that. I went out with my skateboard. You know, he's, he's quite a bit taller than I am. And I was skating around, and he came up to me, and he said, you better get off my street. Or I, and as soon as he started to say, I'm going to, I went, boom, right in his nose like that. <laughs> I mean, I didn't haul off and deck him. I just, boom. <laughs> and I said, like that? And I don't think he knew what to do. He just stood there and he stared at me. And by that time, all of his buddies were laughing at him. So before they were laughing at me and now they were laughing at him. Now there's no kids in here. Kids, this is not a good example that your pastor is setting up. Okay. Um, but he's the one who took off. And guess what? I got to skateboard on my street. Now I went out every day looking over my shoulder, waiting for a big old guy to come back and try to get me again. But but listen, as he comes against them with these threats, it can be scary. And when they come at us with threats, it can be scary. Our temptation is to run away. Our temptation is to back down. But I wonder, I wonder when we just stand, how many of you remember three Hebrew children that stood? And you've got Josephs and you've got Daniels and you've got people all throughout Scripture who just stand for what's right. And when we stand for what's right, it's amazing what God can do through our lives. But we see the threatening spirit. They were going to come against them. They were going to try to stop the work of the Lord. They were going to attack them. Now, this morning, as we considered the critical spirit and we considered the threatening spirit, how do we engage this? How do we win? How do we get victory? Very quickly this morning, we're almost out of time. Let's look at the victorious spirit. What did these people of God do to engage this enemy? Well, first of all, I want us to notice that they didn't do anything in themselves. They prayed. And this was consistent. This was consistent with the way that Nehemiah had conducted himself through this whole calling that God had given to him. He would always go to God first and pray and seek the face of God. And we find that they do so again. Nehemiah himself prays. Notice with me here at the end of verse number three. I'm sorry, into verse number four. Hear, O God, for we are despised and turn their reproach upon their own head and give them for a prey in the land of captivity and cover not their iniquity and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have proved thee to uh, provoke thee to anger before the builders. So he prayed. He went before God. He didn't try to take care of business on his own. He went to God first. That's how we engage the wicked one. We go to God. How many of you know that's even what Jesus did in the garden before he went to the cross? It was on him. It was on him. That pressure was on him. And he went to the Lord and he prayed, Lord, let your will be done. We need to go to the Lord as we are engaging the enemy. But also we need to be prepared. We need to be prepared to engage the enemy. I love how when we read this passage that Nehemiah did several things to prepare God's people. First of all, he reminded them what they were fighting for. I think that's good. He said, hey, remember your God. He's great and he's terrible and he will fight for us. And by the way, as we engage our enemies, how many of you are glad that God will fight for us? He will fight for us. 
And then he said, fight for your homes and your houses and your land. Hey, may I say today, would we as Christians be faithful to stand in the face of our enemies and stand for the Lord, for our homes, for our churches, for our friends, for our family, for the things that God has given to us? Let's not let that enemy break through and still kill and destroy like we know Satan desires to do. We need to stand. What I like about this, too, is they arm themselves. They arm themselves. You know what I love? I love that picture of the trowel in one hand and the sword in the other hand. How many of you know that's the way every good construction job should be done? <laughs> a trowel in one hand and an AK in the other, amen. <laughs> just taking care of business on the wall. And let me just say this, and, and, and I'm so sick of people saying, don't get political, don't do this, don't do that. And I'm not political. I believe we have been given rights by God to protect ourselves. That's all the way throughout history. That's all throughout the people of God. And let me just tell you something. You get a gun, you get it in your home, you protect your home if somebody breaks into your home. Yeah. Now learn how to use it and be skilled with it and make sure that you're not reckless but let me tell you something. God has given us certain unalienable rights. Our founding fathers were smart enough to be close enough to God to pack those into our freedoms. And let's be sure that we're not giving away all of our rights that God has given to us. And we need to stand for those things. Now, now let me just say this. Let me just say this. I'm glad we get excited about that. But when we start preaching about leading souls to the Lord, let's clap just as loud for that as well. Amen. When, when we talk about supporting missions and we talk about going out and being a witness, let's not just get riled up about our, our political freedoms. Let's get riled up about the freedoms God has given us as a believer to go and to share his word. It doesn't do any good for us to have a gun in our home if we don't have a Bible in our hand. We got to have the trowel and we got to have the weapon. And so we need to be about... Uh, this thing of being prepared, being prepared. They had a trowel, they had a sword, and they were ready to engage the enemy. They were ready to engage the enemy. Now, we know what our sword is, spiritually speaking. How many of you are glad we have the sword of the word of God? This is the sword that Jesus himself used when he was attacked by the enemy. You remember when he was drawn out into the wilderness and tempted by Satan, what did he do? He took the word of God and he spoke God's word to Satan. And so we need to be prepared in our lives. He not only prepared uh, by having them uh, armed and, and having them ready on the wall, he prepared their hearts to do the work. How many of you know that when you're doing the work, you don't get distracted by a lot of other things? They're on the wall putting up brick after brick. They don't have time to worry. They don't have time to fret. They don't have time to be afraid. Why? Because they're putting that wall together. You know, some of us, we need to get our eyes off of all the commotion that's going on and we need to get back on focus on the work that God has called us to do so that we're not so distracted. Hey, we are building something for God. Let's stay focused on building things for him. So we're prepared. He also prepared them through communication. He says in one of these verses, this wall is big, guys, and we're spread all over the place. Let's get some trumpets around. Let's make sure there's good communication with each other. Let's make sure we know what's going on. So if they come in to get us, we're prepared. Blow that trumpet, and we'll all go around where that trumpet's being blown. You know, I liken that to us getting together for church. How many of you believe that's important? Amen. Three of us, all right. <laughs> I believe it's very important for us to get together. What are we doing? When we come together, isn't it good to be able to trumpet the things of God to each other? Right. To, to give warning and encouragement and instruction and direction. We're on a wall together, folks. This isn't spectator sport time. We're part of a church for a reason. We're connected together for a reason. We've got a great enemy, and God's given us great resources, and we should come together on the wall, trowel in hand, sword in hand, trumpet in hand, helping to lead the charge for the glory of God. Because we're building something great for Him. So... We understand that as we look at this victorious spirit, it's one that prays, it's one that's prepared, and it's one that perseveres. I love the last verse of this. <laughs> Nobody in Nehemiah's group relaxed or took their clothes off 
except they were so stinky they couldn't work next to each other and they had to wash them from time to time. Have you ever had to turn to somebody and just say, take a bath? Can you imagine working on this wall, not changing your clothes, trowel in one hand, sword in the other, sweating buckets? It's like, okay, we got to get some shifts here. We got to get these clothes off, get them clean. But you know what that showed? It showed the perseverance of God's people to do the work that was there. And I'm just, saying, I'm just saying this, Christians give up too easy today. Christians give up on their marriages too easy. They give up on their homes too easy. They give up on their kids too easy. They give up on their callings too easy. They give up on, on, on sticking with the stuff for God too easy. And I get that wounds happen. I get that hurts happen. I understand. I've felt those things before. But there's a wall to be built. There's a work to be done. Our God is great. He will fight for you. And he is worthy of us giving it our all. Amen. So only wash your clothes when you need to. <laughs> Other than that, keep on the wall. Keep fighting the good fight. Brick after brick. Day after day, criticism after criticism, threat after threat, we will be victorious because it's about him. It's not about us. Let's all stand this morning with our heads bowed and eyes closed, no one looking around. Heads bowed, eyes closed, no one looking around this morning. Maybe you're here today and say, Pastor, I'm not sure that, that I am a child of God. I'm not certain that if I died today that I'd be with God in heaven. Maybe you've never gone to the Lord knowing that you're a sinner and knowing that he's your savior, that he loved you, that he came from heaven to earth to die in your place for your sin and then rose again so that you might have eternal life if by faith you'll merely accept him and know him as your Savior. We're so glad that you joined us for worship today and we want to continue to bring you this wonderful worship programming would you help to partner with us in doing that go to takemehome.church and when you get there press the give button your donations will help to make a difference in us getting the wonderful message of the lord jesus christ out to our community thank you so much for partnering with us